Okay, we're going to look now how to do volumes of revolution with parametric curves. Now, you should make sure you know how to integrate with parametric curves. So I'm not going to be explaining the theory behind this that would normally be explained from normal maths. This is just applying what we already know from normal maths. So you can be expected to find volumes of revolution for curves which are defined parametrically. Now, the ones in blue are our regular volumes of revolution formulae. All that happens if they are parametric is you also have to multiply by an extra dx dt dt. You have to change it like this. Now, the reason we multiply by dx dt here is so that we can actually integrate with respect to t. Let me just explain a little bit more by what I mean by this. At the moment, y is a function of t. Remember that when you do parametric, it's in terms of t or theta. Now, if I had y squared and I was trying to integrate it with respect to x, we have an issue because y is in terms of t, but I want to integrate it with respect to x. The way I counter that is I multiply it by dx dt so that I can then do integrate it with respect to t. And you can kind of see what's happened here. If I cancel that dt with the one in the denominator, I've got exactly the same formula that's as above. So it's the same with the integration. You are just simply going to be multiplying by dx dt. That last part becomes a dt so that you can do that. And it's the same thing for here. If it's dy usually, it becomes a dy dt so that we're then allowed to integrate it with respect to t. There's one more thing that has changed. The limits were a and b. Those a and b limits were the limits of x. And these a and b limits were the limits with y. I've changed the limits to p and q. These p and q limits must be the t values. They must be the parametric ones, which is the exact same thing as in normal maths. So I've put, be careful, the limits must match what the function is being integrated with respect to. So in this case, the limits, if you're doing parametrically, need to be the parametric values at those points. So again, just one example, and then you can try the exercise. It says here that the curve C has parametric equations x equals t, brackets 1 plus t, y equals 1 over 1 plus t, and t is greater than or equal to 0. The region is bounded by C, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals 2. So here's my 0, and here's my 2, and I'm wanting to rotate it about the x-axis. So the volume normally is pi y squared dx, but because I'm doing parametric, it is going to be pi y squared dx dt dt. And I need to find out what these limits, p and q, are at the top. So I'm going to start off by finding out what those limits are going to be. So my limits. Normally, I would be doing it between 0 and 2. So I'm going to find out when x equals 2, what is t equal to? When x is equal to 2, when x is equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, we get 0 equals t1 plus t, which means that either t is equal to 0 or t is equal to minus 1 but t has got to be greater than or equal to 0, so t is equal to 0. So now I know that the bottom part of this is going to be a 0. And when x is equal to 2, I'm going to find out what t is equal to. Okay, So I'm going to find out what is t at this particular point here, which is when x is 2. So that means 2 equals t 1 plus t that we've got at this part. So we could just figure out what these are going to be. I'm going to just do this as a, a quadratic. So we get t equals, so 2 equals t plus t squared. In other words, we have t squared plus t minus 2. So that's a t minus 2 and a t plus 1. So t is 2 or t is minus 1. It doesn't make sense for, I think I've got that right. Have I factorized that correctly? 2 minus 1, yeah, I have factorised that correctly. So t can't be minus 1 because it's got to be greater than 0, which means that the top part, no, I haven't factorised this correctly. I am stupid, is what I am. I am ashamed of how badly I have factorised that. So let's see if I can fix this. It's t plus 2 and t minus 1. So t is either minus 2 or t is equal to 1. Obviously, it can't be minus 2 because of the fact it's got to be greater than 0. I can do all this further maths, but I can't factorise a quadratic. So it means this t that was 0 is now here, and this t that's 1 is going to go at the top. Okay, And then it's just going to be our y squared dx dt dt. So let's go through all of these different things. y squared is going to be 1 over... 1 plus t squared, 
and x is equal to t brackets 1 plus t, which is t plus t squared. And we also need to have the dx dt. So I'm going to differentiate x with respect to t, and that's 1 plus 2t. So I have now got the y squared part that can go here, and I've got the dx dt part that can go here, and I can just actually go about doing the whole part of the integration. So that's the integral of pi between 0 and 1 of 1 over 1 plus t squared multiplied by 1 plus 2t, like this, and that's dt. So I'm trying to integrate 1 plus 2t over 1 plus t squared. Now, unfortunately, the derivative of this is not this. The denominator is 1 plus 2t plus t squared. When you differentiate that, you get 2 plus 2t. If it was, then that would be really, really easy. We could just do its ln of this kind of thing, but it's not that kind of thing. So when we integrate this, we have to be a little bit more careful because the numerator is not this. Instead, we are going to have to do partial fractions. It's the only way we can work on this thing. So if I just do a bit for partial fractions, that's 1 over 2t, 1 plus t squared. Now we know with partial fractions, this would be an a over 1 plus t plus a b over 1 plus t squared. Remember if there's something that's squared in the denominator, you have it non-squared and you have it squared as well. So that's 1 plus 2t equals a multiplied by 1 plus t plus b, because this one only needs the 1 plus t to get it to 1 plus t squared. This one doesn't need anything at all. So I can just expand, or I can just do some comparing coefficients. For example, I can clearly see that a is going to be equal to 2. This is when I compare t, because I have 2t here and nothing there. So a is equal to 2. If I compare the constants, I can see on the left-hand side I would have a 1, and I would have a plus b, so 1 equals 2 plus b, so b is equal to minus 1. So now I can actually do this integration, because I can say it's pi between 0 and 1. a is 2 over 1 plus t, and b is minus 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. Now, the first one is going to integrate with an ln, the next one is just going to integrate using normal kind of reverse chain rule stuff. But I personally like to see it written in this way. So I'm going to see it as 2 over 1 plus t minus 1 plus t to the power of minus 2 dt. So I'm actually going to do the integration. This is going to be an ln of 1 plus t, but it's been scaled by that 2. And then this one, I'm going to increase the power. So it's going to increase the power to minus 1. And then I'm going to divide by that new power. So it actually just becomes a plus 1 plus t um, to the power of minus 1. I don't need to do any scaling because in both of these cases, there was nothing in front of the t, so I didn't need to do any scaling for that. And that's just between 0 and 1. So when I put pi, I'm going to put in 1 first of all. That's going to be 2 ln 2 plus 1 plus 1. That's 2 to the power of minus 1. That's a half. And then I'm going to have, subtracting from this, 2 ln 1, subtract 1 to the power of minus 1, which is just 1. So that is pi, 2 ln 2. This is just 0, and a half minus 1 is a half. And I'm pretty happy to just leave it in that form, that it is pi, 2 ln 2, minus a half, and again, the units, whatever the units are, they would be units cubed for this kind of bit. So if you're like not that familiar with like um, partial fractions and integration, you're going to find this kind of difficult. So you might want to spend some time with your tutor or your teacher or just making sure that you've gone through everything with integration, because you'll notice here I haven't been teaching you the integration. I've just been saying, OK, cool, we know how to do this. But that's because I don't know exactly who I'm teaching right now. So I'm just going in. This is how I would do it. Come back in the next video where we're going to be doing some things to do with modelling.